to RC Cincy. Today we have the C-186 helicopter. This is by RC Air. Um, and this is Cool Bank Family. So I guess uh, they're very similar clones of these and they are different. Please keep that in mind. Uh, some are missing some features, some um, have extra features. So keep that in mind excuse me, when you're purchasing this, and there will be a difference between the prices of each one. Prices are subject to change, so I'll tell you guys where I got it from, I'll give you guys the link, but it is subject to change. If you wanna get this version, there are a couple other versions which we'll talk about later in the video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the unboxing, and then we'll um, try to fly this bad boy and talk a little bit about more variants and uh, different uh, versions. So, I purchased this from um, from uh, what was it Walmart for sixty six dollars and sixty eight cents. It was a clearance item. I guess I sat a little bit on the shelf or something like that. I would imagine why they're trying to clearance it. Uh, so that's not a bad price considering I've seen these a little bit more. But there is variance, so keep that in mind. Uh, so let's see here. The instruction manual is just going to give you the basics. I recommend just looking over it, at least like uh, the controls, definitely, even though they're labeled, they're very simple. Just look over the controls. Uh, these are all the spare parts you get. Uh, just talks about everything in detail. Uh, it has some troubleshooting towards the back, stuff like that. Um, distances it's capable of all that good stuff. Um, talks about the board. That's kind of nice. Uh, it also talks about working on it, like the different stuff. It does have a brushed motor. Uh, I think it is, so it does have a detailed thing. I could tell you the size of it. Uh, it is right over here. Let me flip again. So in specifications, the motor is, the main motor is a uh, 1002. So it's a decent sized little brushed motor. And then of course the tail motor is a 0720. 0720 is what the tail motor is. Uh, it gives you the length, height, stuff like that. Battery specifications, 350 mil. It says about 15 minutes of flight time, which seems kind of accurate from what I can tell. It gives you another detailed thing of uh, the uh, board. So that's nice to know. And, uh, and I'll talk about uh, this diagram here in a little bit and you'll see why. I did actually do a sneak peek on this. Technically, I did a video and the video messed up. Um, I deleted the wrong part of it and I just didn't want to try to piece it together. So I did, uh, but when I did do that, I did do some more research and I actually took this helicopter apart and looked in it and figured some stuff out for you guys. So it was kind of important I did that anyways. So you have a little clear top. Let's slide this a little bit over so we can kind of have everything in the. So we have the instructions, a clear little top. What else we got in here? A screwdriver and a tail prop and a um, Allen key. So this is gonna access the blades and some other components. So it's nice that it give you an Allen key plus a spare tail uh, prop, that's nice. And of course a screwdriver so you can do repairs or whatever you need. Looks like a, what kind of connector? Micro USB, little short uh, charger. That's how you're gonna charge the battery itself. Um, and then, how many is that? Two spare props, which is nice. They give you that. The controller itself. It does, it's not the worst, cheapest plastic. It feels pretty good in the hand, actually. Uh, and stuff is labeled. Your one button takeoff and landing. Your low speed medium and then all the way over is high so i like that a lot very easy to access 
feels like none of these buttons are clickable. Um, to calibrate is both to the left and a 45 degree angle. Very important if you have a gnarly wreck. Of course, you have one, two, three, all four trim buttons. Uh, your power button, your light, and it should have a beeping sound indicating when you bind or any other thing. So on the back, you are gonna need four AA batteries. So I have them right here. Please use alkaline, don't use nickel cadmium cheap batteries. Uh, I would buy alkaline. Uh, those other cheaper batteries are for low discharging like clocks and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. They're gonna perform terrible on a controller and you definitely want signal. Uh, this is definitely a line of sight aircraft. So really quickly, it does have a beep and it flashes slow for searching for signal. We'll set that down right here. And then last, but definitely not least, the helicopter itself. Let's push that up a little bit. We'll kind of center this stuff. So the helicopter itself, uh, not bad. Honestly, I thought I was getting the gray one. At least, uh, I can't remember if the site gave you a thing that, I think it was whatever was on clearance at the time, because you do save a little bit of money. Um, and it was free shipping, so I think Clarence, I think I actually had this one, I wasn't paying attention, I was just so excited, and I clicked on it, uh, while I read that it was what it was, and I kind of did my research, but, uh, do your research before you buy something, just a little bit at least, um, you can use this video, um, to help make you an informative decision, so that, that's always nice, uh, it has the black and green theme, but what I don't like is kind of blotchy too much. It should have been broken up a little more green there, but it's okay because the windows are supposed to be black for tinted. You can see there, it does have, you know, the exhaust, little scale detail, this little thing here. These little pieces can come out when you wreck gnarly, just to let you know, they just pop right back in. You can put a little dab of glue if you'd like, up to you. You do have a tail light. You do have a light for the bottom right there. Um, more little scale details here and there, little vents, and if you pay attention to it, it actually does have quite a bit of detail. It looks really good on the shelf. I feel like the, honestly, I'm gonna be honest with you, I feel like the gray looks better, but I was talking to my wife and she said that she would repaint this for me, take her time with a little brush and repaint the helicopter a new scheme. I'm thinking something for RC Cincy or maybe the gray or maybe gray with black accents. I don't know yet. Uh, paint the exhaust like a silver or like a uh, gold like the gray one is. I haven't decided yet, but we might do a paint job on this, um, depending how it flies. Um, you got your little skis there. Of course, the battery. Let's go ahead and just pull that out for now. Uh, that is the slot. You can see the connectors. This is kind of a proprietary connector, but the good news is I found these on Amazon for fairly cheap. I think it was like 14 bucks or something. So they are fairly cheap. Uh, keep in mind, you can see four slots in the packaging. Uh, there are combos up to four batteries, I do believe, four or five. Uh, I know you can get a two combo battery and a three 100%. I'm pretty sure you can get a four as well. Um, depending where you buy from and the combos and the price, you know, if it's like an extra five or 10 bucks, it's worth it because these are 14 on Amazon. Five, they probably get like five bucks for shipping or whatever their profit. So if you get them for like 10 bucks with free shipping or, you know, some kind of deal that just adds maybe five or 10 bucks to the cost of it, I guess it'd be worth it then. So keep that in mind. Tail rotor does have yellow accents on the blades, which looks cool when it's flying. Uh, it does have three servos and a swash plate right there that it will articulate. That's how it has front pitch, back pitch, roll right, roll left, and then obviously elevation, and then your yaw with the tail rotor causing the yaw. So it's really, really cool. I like it. Um, uh, we'll talk about this whole, there's actually a quality control sticker there, but I peeled it off to investigate, and then I just put a little piece of tape, because any holes you'll have in here, wind will from the blades will go through and make like a whistling sound. <laughs> so keep that in mind. So light there. That's pretty much the gist of it. Geared brushed motor. Uh, some of it does, it does have some metal in there, not a lot. Uh, like I said, the Allen key are for these props, which I like. Less likely to strip because these screws, the type of screws these are, they do strip easily. Um, so I like the fact that they're using Allen key to secure the most important part, one of the most important parts. So really quickly looking at the battery. This is 7.4 volts, 350 milliamp battery in this housing. Now, what I might end up doing is taking this housing apart and seeing like this adapter piece right here, like these prongs. I don't want to necessarily take that away. I might remove that entirely and just do like a JST connector or something. Probably JST is what I'm going to use. Solder JST on there and just put JST batteries and make 
take this part of the plastic and make it like a hatch, like cut to where it's just that part. Then you can squeeze it like this. Technically, I could wire off and on switch to that. <laughs> That'd be really cool. But just a cover basically is what I need. Um, so I thought about it. You can fit a really nice 450, 500, 650 milliamp battery in there. As compared to 350, you, I would definitely recommend 7.4 volts hands down. I wouldn't run any lower voltage because of the size motor in there. You're really going to starve the helicopter. It's not going to perform good. Um, so yeah, I thought about that. Uh, let me know if you guys are interested in something like that. I might do it for me just because I have 650s, 450s, and 230s, like four, five, two thirties. Two thirties would be a little bit less, but if it, this is getting 15 minutes, I'd be fine with like a seven or eight minute flight time. Uh, but I definitely have the two 450s from WL Toy Cars. I have another 650 from, a, a another vehicle. And then I could probably get those much cheaper than these proprietary batteries, probably get like a combo pack. And I like JST connections. So we're going to look into that. Um, what else? Da, 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 da. So that's the battery. It does have, you do squeeze it and kind of pull out. It does have a battery indicator. If you just click it one time, it will show you the battery life. It has four bars. If you click, if you click it, it just shows. But if you click and then hold, that's how you turn it on. See how it's staying on? If you leave this on, it will drain itself, so make sure you press and then hold and let go. If the battery's not lit up, it is off. So keep that in mind. That's how, that is how you turn on the aircraft is from the power button on the battery. There is no other off and on battery. Remember, it goes in one way. You'll hear it click. Nice firm click. Showing you the battery gauge and off. So really nice. Uh, when you turn it on, there are, is going to be a light underneath here and a light on the tail flashing, searching for signal. So keep that in mind as well. So that's really uh, the unboxing. Now, really quickly before I take off, I do want to talk about um, important things. So there's a couple variants of this. I think the number one rated one or the one that most people have that they love is the Isheen version. It's about 85 to 89, uh, maybe with shipping from Banggood. Not with shipping, but you have to probably get shipping. I don't think I've seen it on Amazon. I'll see if I can find that one. I think there was an Amazon one for, I think, 89 And there may have been a 112 one that may have been the Ishin. One of the two or something similar to the Ishin where it has the optical flow and an extra battery. This one does not have op the optical flow would normally go there. They just put a quality control sticker over it, which is fine. But I removed it to investigate. There is a spot on the board. So I've now taken these little screws. They're easy to strip. I took all these screws out the landing gear feet and this one so I can open it far enough to pull the butt chassis out. It is gonna be attached to the tail rail. Do not pull those wires out. I checked it and um, it clearly has, uh, what do you call it? It clearly has um, no optical flow, but it has the connection. Uh, everything else is taken up but the optical flow. How you know it's the optical flow connection is by looking at this chart. That's the one that's missing on mine. Uh, now, there is a couple other variants as well that I need you guys to uh, make you aware of. Please read it carefully or maybe watch a review on the exact model and type. Just because it's C1A6, it's not the same. There's a couple of different variants. Keep that in mind. So mine has uh 6g um so it's on the box see they didn't lie they didn't say it has optical flow if you look on the box uh it just tells you the weight 15 minutes of flight time and 100 uh, meter distance for the thing but if you look at the thing look take off and land six axis gyro 2.4 gigahertz uh intelligent battery which it is technically it'll probably discharge after a while too usb charger four channel ready to fly easy to fly. You can see it says nothing about optical flow. The ones that have it will have it on the box just to let you know and on the sure on the web page as well. So um, optical flow is going to just keep it more stable. It does have a um, it does have a uh, barometric bar biometric or whatever uh, sensor in it. So it's kind of like the not the air pressure I forget what it's called. It has something to do with air pressure like height like the air pressure increases as you go up or something. I forget exactly how it works, but those aren't as accurate. You'll see them like slowly descend, especially like in, indoors. Um, you'll see it like slowly descend down. You may have to bump it back up. You'll see it maybe creep up a little bit or creep down. Optical flow will keep you more steady and will bring you back if there's wind. Biometric will not bring you back if there's wind. 
uh, it'll kind of keep you in the range of it, but uh, mainly it'll be um, the optical flow with the position sensor facing the ground, keeping you, if the wind blows, it's gonna correct and keep it back to this point. So optical flow works really well. You can literally set that controller walk away. That's how good optical flow, I wouldn't recommend doing that, but I watched some reviews where they actually did that. So keep that in mind. This having that, it still keeps it pretty good. It has a little slag, but it will drift off. How you address the drift is find a perfectly flat level surface. Look at your skis. If the helicopter isn't perfectly flat and level, um, that's the way you're going to drift when you bind it. So make sure your skis are perfectly level. Make sure it's on a perfectly level flat area. Um, and then you turn it on, reach under your knee, turn it on, make sure it's flat when you bind it. And that's what's, and then uh, calibrate it, especially after a wreck or the first time you use it, I would definitely recommend calibrating it. Once you calibrate the helicopter, it's gonna do better. You're flying, it's drifting a little bit to right, trim it the other way so it comes back this way. And then if it starts to go back, trim a little bit, get it close to where it'll have a very, very slow drift, very light drift. Uh, if it's doing like this, pretty steady, it's pretty out of whack. I'll definitely calibrate it. So keep that in mind, but you can obviously correct it with the controller. The faster you go in rates, the faster the is gonna be more responsive and quicker. Your yaw, which is your turn like this, is gonna increase. Your pitch is gonna increase, and the power of the blades is gonna increase. So keep that in mind. If you fly indoors, just find a big enough room. It doesn't need the world's biggest room, but give yourself space not to hit like ceiling fans and TVs, and just think about that, because these blades can scratch a TV. These blades can be damaged. I think I got one naked. I mean, it was, I wrecked it probably three or four times with my wife. Uh, and I think the most damage I've seen was a little nick right here. That little nick. Hopefully you can see it. Focus. Like right there. So it, they're pretty durable. You should get a lot of flight. Something like that's not major. But if it's like a crack or a big bend, uh, see if you can fix it. If not, um, adding glue or weight will change. Um, because centrifugal force straighten these out. If you add weight to one side, it will kind of change that a little bit. So keep that in mind, like glue or something. I would just, or tape, I would just replace them. Uh, if they're good enough to fly flat, but if it's acting really, really wonky after you calibrated it, then I'd probably replace the blade. You do get the blade for the back. How is this one mounted? This one just pressure point pushed on. Uh, brushed motor. This one was a little wonky. Just make sure it's straight. Like mine was like really bent like that. Not a lot, but bent a little bit. So you can actually bend these back and just make sure they're straight. Um, what else? Uh, these, one of those came off when I wrecked. They just pop in and out. You see the little tab. Uh, you can put a little dab of glue, but I feel like when they pop off, keeps them from breaking. So maybe just do it this way. They don't pop off when you're flying, only typically when you wreck or you like bump it against something instead of breaking it, just pops off. Kind of makes sense. Uh, so that's, I think I covered everything I could think of. I wanted to give you guys a detail of the you know, the, the entire chopper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw these items in the box and I'm probably gonna move the tripod to the living room because I feel like I have more room. So what we'll do is the battery is fully charged. I charged it before this. So I have batteries in there as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause for a second. I'm gonna set the tripod up in the living. Well, the only thing I like about, let me, let's do this. Let's calibrate with you guys on the, on. So with this one, let's move this out of the way. I'm not gonna fly right here. With this one is find something flat level. My table's pretty close. Tile's gonna be pretty level. Some concrete can shift with time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find where the button is and I'm gonna press and hold and turn it on and immediately have it on flat ground. It's not on because the lights will be flashing. Press and hold. There we go. Set it down while it's flashing. You know, uh, vice versa in this hot drone toy grade. It's always the drone first, then the controller. Then you're gonna go up, down, beep, solid light. You can see no more flashing. We're golden. We are currently bound to calibrate in a 45 degree angle both sticks. See the lights flashing? Let me do it again. That is your calibration. So now it's calibrated. Uh, it likes this one. Uh, I don't know about the one with the optical flow sensor. You might be able to take off mine if I hold up for a while. Let's hold it for three seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold it up again. This one wants you to take off with this button and you can land with the down button. It takes, sometimes it takes a second for the blades cut off. I think the auto landing is the way to go. 
Uh, keep that in mind. Don't forget about your speeds. If you need a little speed, let's say you're flying. Each speed will beep, so speed two, two beeps. Speed three, three beeps. So back to one. So to change, oh yeah, this is mode two, meaning throttle's on this side and throttle y'all is on this side and roll and pitch is on that side. If you press and hold this button, guess what happened? Now, this should have been throttle. I don't know if it worked. Well, at least. Now it's still that and this is still thing. Well, that, when you press and hold that, uh, it's supposed to switch the modes. Maybe this one can't do it or the one I have, I don't know, honestly. Maybe you have to turn off the transmitter and turn it back on. There we go, rebind it. Now let's see. Nope, it's still, that's still the roll. And then this is still the pitch. So I don't know how, but supposedly when you press and hold this, uh, it's supposed to do that. Nah, it didn't. But that's the way you're supposed to change the modes. When you order it, mode two is, uh, mode one is throttle and yaw on this side and pitch and roll on this side. And then vice versa, mode two is throttle on this side and pitch and roll on this side. So mode two is what you typically see on the drones. So we'll go ahead and pause it. We gotta calibrate, oh, let's calibrate one more time. There's the calibration. And let's go ahead and we can just grab the tripod, I guess, and move it right to the, whoop, uh, if I don't fall on my face. So we're going to set the tripod like this, I guess. Wait, my wife. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pause because um, I'm going to close the door and I'm going to wait for my wife to get off from me and I can hear in the other room. I don't want this to be too loud. So we'll pause for a second, come right back and fly this. Okay, so we're back. My wife uh, just got out of, got off the meeting. I didn't want to be rude and super loud because I was meeting with her boss. So let's turn that on, put it down. Hopefully it's calibrated from last time. Turn this on. We're going to go up, down. Solid light, and then we're gonna hit the one button takeoff. I'm gonna kind of stand over here in case it goes towards the TV. I can kind of grab it. Uh, so let's go ahead and take off. There we go. Lights were flashing, anything that's taking off. Has a little bit of a drift. I'm gonna go ahead and let go of the controls. You can see that drift, so we can trim that out. Just like that. So we click the trim. Looks like it's going back a little bit. We'll do one forward. So I'm going to try to level out before I let it go. Let it go. One forward. One to the left. There you go. See that? See that? That's pretty well trimmed. See that? Just a little bit of drift. See that? That's all it should be. Now let's go ahead and give it some yaw. That's Y'all rate, rate one, very snappy. Look at that. Due to the room, that's as fast as I go forward and backward. Roll right, roll left, pitch forward, pitch back all on your right stick. Get back centered up. Y'all rate one more time. Okay, rate two. Two beats. Y'all rate first. Oh yeah. That's faster. Let's come down a little bit. Okay, come down a little bit more. Just bump it. Not bad. Y'all rate, and then pitch forward rate. <laughs> Whoa, that's faster. And then finally, third rate. Oh wow, that's power right there. I mean, I'm barely hitting it. I mean, look at that. Snapping. Look at that y'all race. Holy smokes. So ray three is where it's at. That's the most power. We kind of see where this video is starting and kind of get a flight time. We're not going to probably do the full 15 minutes because this video is long enough. But the main objective was to show you just how uh, 
stable this is. This is great. Grease has the most power spinning. Oh, you can feel that wind. It has a little bit of drift now being Ray 3. Like I said, we can adjust it. Let's go ahead and manually land, show you that you can, you can manually land. I prefer the auto. So what you do is just hold the stick down the whole time and it lands. Of course, you can hit the one touch land. So I'm gonna hit one touch takeoff and I'm gonna hit one touch land for you. Make sure you can still keep your fingers on the controls because as it's going down, it may move a little bit. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure the, the thing is like that a little bit. The tail's a little crooked, it looks like. Or the little plastic thing. That could affect the trim. <laughs> oh, let me go back to rate one. Because it's too snappy for this small of a room. So let's go ahead and do the auto land. So you still want to guide it. We just want to guide it. And it auto lands. It's not the worst sounding one. It had a whistling sound, so I forgot to put one of the screws in. And the wind was going through the screw hole. It was like, Kind of sound like a uh, turbo turbo uh, prop, which technically this is, has a prop and a big turbo type motor in it. Um, you can see the big engines in the back. Right there, so they are big turbo prop engine, big engines. So that whistling was kind of cool. Uh, I forget what screw is, like one of these side screws right here. So if you take one out, you get that turbo whistle sound. Uh, it's not doing it no more because I put the screw back in. I forgot one. They're all in there. Assembly is very key though, putting this back together. You have to get the frame. It's just a little frame, has all the components on it. You have to get it in these little holes and then you tighten it up with the screws. You have to make sure the lights put in the right place. You have to make sure this little exhaust piece is put in the right place. So if you take it apart, you have to be aware of that. Now, what I did notice is looking at the back of it, this one's like kind of bent down a little bit. So I'm gonna bend it up. These are important. These are, these are supposed to help stabilize the rear end. When air flows across it, it's supposed to keep it straight until you engage this motor. So be aware of that. Uh, these lights will not flash until the battery is low. We are only one notch down. And we flew most of that time. Yeah, yeah. 15 minutes is realistic. I would say I think I flew 12 or 13 minutes with my wife and it didn't even flash then on the first video. So keep that in mind. Um, right one is good for indoors. It has all the power you need. If you're outside and it's starting to get a little breezy, just increase the rate. If it's starting to fly away, just hold down and just come come down. Even if it's further away from you, at least you brought it back down. Don't let it fly away and drift away. Uh, that's the problem most people have is they'll try to like keep fighting it and just keep climbing and that's how it just gets blown away. The one button takeoff. I have not been able to take off without the one button takeoff. The lights flash indicating that, hey, I'm taking off. Face it towards you. This one is perfect. This is perfect to teach you how to fly a drone. Why do I say that? Look at the stability of it. I don't like the fact that it's not throttle management, altitude hold, that's fine. It gives you more envelope. But it's teaching you yaw, which is turning, and elevation, which is up and down. It's teaching you orientation. So if you're flying this way, pitch forward, and you turn, and then fly this way, and you turn, and then fly this way, and you turn, start, start to do like a circle, the harder it looks. A circle, you need more room than this. I would definitely do this outside, especially being a beginner, unless you have a really big uh, living room or something. Uh, but just learn orientation. Remember, if you're this way now, uh, left is right, right is left. So remember, it would be like you're in the seat. If you turn left, you're gonna turn left. So keep, just remember with orientation, how it works. Uh, but just practice with it, but it's snappy, it's got power, it's extremely fun and extremely stable. All I needed was calibration one time. Yours might even be more stable than this. Imagine if it had the optical flow sensor, how stable it would be. So you see, I can create lift by, it has the same speed and then the wind just kind of pushing itself up. So other objects will cause it to drift off. If it hits something, wind splashes on it, it'll push it away. So keep that in mind. And there's that. So I really, really like this helicopter. I'm gonna try to, ooh, it is fun. I'm not gonna lie. It is fun. I, I like to keep the orientation away from you. And that way you can kind of, you know, figure it until you get more comfortable. You do what I call a tornado. Whoa, gotta be careful. I not that much room to be doing a lot of fancy stuff in here. Don't wanna hit that TV. So you can do a joystick tornado where it's just literally the yaw controls. I mean, literally the pitch and roll controls only. 
and then you can implement uh, yaw. <laughs> it's just so controllable, and it looks, when it's flying, it looks so real from a distance, it looks like a real helicopter. This is my least, not least, I think this is the least best looking scale-wise paint job. The gray is killer. That's probably the most popular one. It was planned on the more least popular one. I don't care. It flies good. Like I said, I'm probably going to do my own paint scheme on it. Like I said, not having that out, that uh, has bronze or whatever, that thing kind of helps. But really, the optical flow position is where it's at. Fancier drones have that. I'm curious to see, is there enough room to land on this lens? No, I'll get the blades on the wall. There's not enough room there. What I can do is one, because it's so stable. Oh, I'm about to wreck. So you have an option of landing on a table. That's probably the most challenging task. Because this is going to create splash and it's going to want to. Look at that. Beautiful landing. It is extremely, it's, it's pretty darn stable. And I'm not, honestly, I haven't flown drones. I always look at little things like the prop. Are they straight? Like the blade, is that blade straight? Are these plastic? Now this one needs to go up a little bit. Just watch everything. The skis are flat when you're calibrating it. Like all those things do matter. The, the, the object that it's on is nice and flat. So keep that in mind, guys. This thing is epic uh it is fun uh here's where i'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you guys i'm gonna wrap this video up try to get this for a good price uh, i think the 66 dollar clearance one is an amazing price it just does not have optical flow which will make it a point where someone can just walk away and it just holds its place right here and then you can learn forward and you can learn back right left that one's a little bit easier not to say this can't do it this does it but it's gonna need trim you might get lucky get one out of the box that's been calibrated well. Don't even calibrate it. If it take off and it's not drifting at all, just leave it be. Unless you wreck real hard and it starts acting funky, check the blades out, check the back of it out, and then calibrate it if need be. But if it doesn't need it, don't do it. I'm just showing you how to do it in case you need it. Um, it looks good. Uh, it's just beautiful little helicopter scale. The good part about the machines like this is not only can they fly, you get a little bored with it, you put it on the shelf, it looks good. And when you're ready to fly again, you just grab it, charge the battery. Don't put the, uh, I don't recommend putting these batteries discharged. I would charge them up. They're not large, high power ones that can puff and blow up. Any battery can puff and blow up, but can puff and get damaged or crap out on you. But the really drastic low discharge and really high charge, discharge, high charge, Give it a little time between, I'd say three to four minutes. Let the battery cool a little bit. Let's get that hot, but let it cool a little bit. Uh, just simply um, allow it to cool, charge it up, put it in there. I would leave it charged because if it's super low and you wait like a month or two to visit to charge it, it has a possibility of not being able to be charged again. Uh, the cool part is you can buy batteries. Uh, I may modify mine because I really don't want to spend $15 when I have 450s and 650. Uh, uh, JST batteries that would fit in there. Uh, I would even 3D print a little cover. I could literally just take this part of it, like cut right there, and just have it literally just clip in like the battery, like as a door. And I could even make it into an off and on switch. Turn off. It, it just works, you know? Transmitter doesn't feel the worst. It actually feels decent in your hand. Pretty solid, not the cheapest one I've seen. It works as a little handle. Um, Range, I think they said like 100 meters. I wouldn't have it that far. Uh, have it within decent range. Wind, very, very light wind. Remember, you're going to drift. It doesn't have the optical flow position. Uh, so you're going to drift. I honestly wouldn't recommend it. That way you can focus on flying, not having a battle wind while you're flying. Plus, remember, this is a brushed motor. The wind can damage the motors and wear them out. Yes, you can replace this motor. It shows a picture of someone replacing the motor. Yes, it can replace the tail motor. I don't know if it has a plug. I'm sure it has a long wire with a plug. Everything was plugged into the board. So it, the board itself can be replaced. And the, uh, the what you will call it, the board itself and everything else can be replaced. And is this just like a balance thing? Connector? No, it's its own little connector that plugs into the, like the other cheap drones. 
This reminds me of the one batteries that are some uh, other drones. I wonder if this is just basic. This looks like it's basically a drone battery. It is a little warm. I'm not gonna lie. It's a little warm. So you gotta remember, if it's not in this case, the battery might be cooler. It should be getting air through there onto the battery. So if you remove that out of this case, it does have. It does have holes, but which way is it facing when you plug it in? Yeah, it's facing the right way to get air onto it. Yeah, I guess it's getting a little bit of air. But yeah, uh, modding the battery, I think, is going to be the way to go. I may just try to 3D print a little battery door, like bigger than measurements, like measure with my calipers, and then just 3D print a little plastic piece. Maybe I could use a piece of tape or make like a latch or a screw or something to hold it in and kind of like a latch system, or just put a battery in there and put a piece of clear tape at the bottom. You know, uh, it'll still work. I did put a clear piece of tape where the uh, quality control sticker was on, just because I don't want a hole in air escaping through there. You can see it's designed to escape through the top and kind of cools the motor and has room for that swash plate and everything to move in there. Uh, pretty cool, man. It does have a German flag, looks like. So this one was used in the mili uh, German Air for uh, military. I don't know where the gray one, what kind of stickers that one has on it. Oh, I didn't show you how the, really quickly how these move. So let's just let me turn this on. Up, down, always do that to bind. You can see that it bounds. But let me show you how the plates, how the swash plate moves on top. I'm not going to hit the one takeoff button, so don't worry. It's not like you accidentally bump the throttle. So you can look. See? So right, left, forward, back. You can see all the blades moving. And as you increase rates, these should move faster. See that? That's how you control it. And there are three little small micro servers, servos in there. One, two, three. That power, that swash plate that moves it around and creates, you know, the pitch for the blades to pull forward, back, so forth and so on. So I wanted to show you that as well. These work well. Uh, this is similar to like a 110 size, maybe 120-ish size, maybe a little bit bigger, 130, 120, something like that. I know it's a C-186, but it's what it's supposed to be scale wise, but I'm talking like in the helicopter um, lingo, like maybe a 110, 120, 130, somewhere around. Uh, it reminds me of the um, the uh, XK uh, series of helicopters, but those are really, really high detail, a little bit higher quality transmitter with the screen and everything. I think those are closer to 200, like 180, 190, depending on which one and how many batteries and stuff like that. Those are really fancy kind of scale flying ones. I don't think those have uh, capabilities of 3D flying. There is size, this size helicopter that have 3D flying. Um, Ishin even has one that can do one button tricks where you hit the button and it flies upside down. You hit the button again and it turns back up. Hit a button, it does a backflip. So you can look really cool and not even be able to do those tricks. It's kind of funny. So just, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there in helicopters and I just wanted to share this with you guys. So thank you so much for watching the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.